Okay, so this is the the last video for um, I, I, I think I said section one earlier, but section two. Section one doesn't have any videos, so that's gonna throw me off here to start things out. But um, you know, cover a math review. Um, so you know, we talked about units and measurements and errors, and now we're talking about the last piece of accounting for those errors. And so multiplication and division again. Multiplication you can think of it as forward. Division is the reverse of that. So the rules, you know, these are kind of almost identical operations, so the rules are the same. Just like addition and subtraction have the same rules, um, multiplication division are going to share a rule set with each other as well. And so, again, it's going to look very similar. So, the number used in the calculation so if we're doing a calculation with multiplication and division the number used in that multiplication or division uh, with the least number of significant figures. So again, this isn't about precision. And this is actually almost easier. I think this is easier. So least number of significant figures or significant digits. Will determine the number of significant digits in the answer. So again, it's just that our answer can't be better than our worst number. If you want a better answer, make a better measurement. That's what this all boils down to. But now, instead of precision, we're talking about number of significant digits. And so we don't have to do a little aside here. We don't need to talk about precision or anything like that. Let's do an example. So let's say I'm moving to Manhattan and I measure, you know, a prospective apartment. And it's like, you know, 2.0 feet by, uh, we'll say... 12.0 feet. So it only probably costs like three grand a month. You gotta share a bathroom with the entire floor. But they seem like nice people. Seems clean. They all look like they're wearing flip flops in the shower, all that stuff. So it's totally worth it's probably worth four grand. I'm getting away like a bandit. Gotta love that New York real estate game. Alright. So if I just do the calculation, the math isn't too tricky. I get 24 feet squared. 24 foot square foot apartment. You can almost fit a mattress in it. I think you can actually sleep not on your side. So that's pretty good. And you got 12 feet. So there's room for, you know, some storage. No one's 12 feet tall. So, good deal. I mean, I, I'm sure law says it has to have a window. Maybe it doesn't look outside, but it's got to go somewhere. Alright, so. Is that how I report my answer? So again, the math doesn't change. So maybe it's 24 feet. Maybe it's 24.0 feet. Who knows? So I'm going to stick an extra zero on there for now. We'll just see. All right. So we look at this. And I go, well, i got to figure out how many sig figs are in my measured values. And so this is 2. Thinking back to our original rules, that counts. Decimal point means that that zero is going to count. The 1 and the 2 aren't zero, so they count. Decimal point means that zero is going to count. And so that's 3. And then we have to ask ourselves a very difficult question. And that is, what number is smaller? Is 2 smaller than 3, or is 3 smaller than 2? This chapter is just full, or a little section, is just full of hard questions. You know, uh, life is so difficult right now, and here I am asking you what's smaller between 3 and 2. I know, I'm a monster. But hopefully you're all comfortable with the idea that it's 2. And so that means I only get 2 significant digits in my answer. And so that means that I write 24 feet squared. I don't get to write point zero. That's my worst number. That determines what my answer gets. And so again, the math doesn't change. Don't get freaked out. Like, you know how to multiply, you know how to divide, you know how to add, you know how to subtract. If you didn't, um, you wouldn't be in my class already. So all that changes is just, how do you report a final answer? And this stuff isn't even going to come up for, for a while. Um, 
there, there might be a question or two on the first exam about it, but you don't really have to apply it till the concentration section, or I, th I think, which isn't for a while. So, let's do one more example. Like I said, this one's pretty straightforward. So let's say we measure a density. So we're going to have a compound unit. And so to do that, I've got to figure out what the mass of an object is. So maybe, like, I don't know, this clock. Not that I'm, like, just totally grinding, grabbing random objects off of my uh, desk or anything. This clock that I've never put a battery in. Oh, it has a battery. I have never replaced the battery in. Ooh, that's a nice rechargeable one. I need to take that out of there. Recharge it. Yeah, so. This clock that I've definitely never really used. It's, it's just a conversation piece. It's a family heirloom. Uh, you know, uh, from, from the mythical land of Ikea. Solid plastic. Solid. You know, this is, this is raw plastic right here. Untreated. Very high quality. Alright, so. Um, let's say I want to measure the density. So i got to figure out what the mass is, and i got to measure the volume. So that's actually two separate measurements I have to make. And so I measure the mass, and let's say, you know, I'll be very precise here. Ah, I put it on a scale, not just, you know, estimating with my hand. Um, we'll say that's 25.00 grams. And then for density, we divide by a volume. I measure the volume, maybe water displacement or something like that. And we're going to say that it's, uh, we'll keep it simple, 30.0 milliliters. Now, before we do the calculation, just a fun little aside. Every decimal point, I brought this up with measurements, is more expensive than the last. And so, to get a measurement like this, I use, I don't know, a $20 scale. If I add another one, it's like $100. If I add another one, it's 1000 If I add another one on that, it's like a 10000 Every decimal place is more expensive than the last. So if you have an instrument that reads out that far, you want to write those numbers, because you literally paid for them. Volume is even more expensive. Like, something you get to a tenth of, okay... It's probably like 20 bucks. Get another one, 100 bucks. Get on top of that. Most people don't make that equipment. Not that can measure a volume this large. So it gets tricky. Alright, so what we've done is we've set up. If, if you're not following me, because, I don't know, it's my last video for the section and I'm getting a little... The room's getting hot. I'm getting a little loopy, whatever. Uh, all it comes down to is I'm dividing 25.00 grams by 30.0 milliliters. Who cares how we got here? Welcome back to the show. Enjoy. So this is what we're doing. Now, what does the rules say? Well, we'll get there, right? First, got to do the math. And so I'm just going to go 25 divided by 30. Totally doing this in my head. Absolutely. Totally doing this in my head. So 25 divided by 30. 0 0.8333. We'll write another 3 grams per milliliter. So it's a compound unit because it has a unit of mass divided by a unit of volume. Okay, do I get to keep all of that? My calculator gave me more threes than that, but I wrote that many because life's too short. Well, how do I get to report my final answer? So I did the math. What am I going to circle at the end of the day? Well, i got to look at my numbers here. I've got one, two, three, four sig figs, going back to that that last video, or the first video on sig figs. 2 is on a 0, 5 is on a 0, decimal point zero, 0, those count, according to rule 4. 3 is not a 0, so that counts, according to rule 1. 0, 0 counts, because there's a decimal. So there's 3 sig figs. So what's smaller? 3 or 4? 3 is smaller. That means we get 3 in our answer, so it is 0 0.8 three three grams per milliliter. Three sig figs means we get three sig figs in our answer. Now it doesn't make sense that this is three significant figures. Remember, that zero, don't trust it. It's a leading zero. So eight is significant, three is significant, three is significant. That zero is a leading zero. It will never amount to anything. Do not waste your resources on it. It will only use them to cause harm to others. Do not trust it. Okay. So, this is the whole picture for the math review. Thanks for hanging in there. 
Uh, every one of these videos seemed to get longer than I expected. But we talked about everything. And this is exactly how I would do it in class. I would just write in front of a board. A little bit more question and answer, you know. Uh, so hopefully you enjoyed. Um, and so next we will do um, section three, which is an introduction to chemistry. And that's the last section you have to do the first week. <clears throat> so that'll be um, the last section I have done before I open the class up on Moodle. Um, and then probably like Monday of, of week one, like the class will already be running when I, when I develop the videos for the second week. So I'm going to be kind of a little bit hand to mouth this quarter. I apologize. It's a short turnaround from spring quarter. Um, I didn't teach this class in the spring. So if you're looking to work ahead, um, all the worksheets and stuff are there uh, and, un and understand that the lecture videos will be showing up and I will get out in front of the class. Uh, I should be doing more than one week of videos every week and so I'll be able to build a lead. All right. So, um, any help that you need with this, send me an email. Stop in my office hour. If my office hour doesn't fit your schedule, I am available by appointment. We can email back and forth, find a time. I'll drop you a Zoom link, um, and we'll meet when you're available. Uh, as long as it fits my schedule, too. I'm happy to do that. So, uh, don't be shy. Um, there's also a forum that you can ask for help on every single topic. Feel free to use that. Uh, I, I love it seeing students help each other because then you're learning and then the person that's helping you is also learning as well. And I will drop in there and answer questions as well. So I will wait in. So it's not, uh, you know, total Thunderdome where I just let you guys loose on each other. Like, I'll, I'll offer my opinion as well. But if someone answers the question before me, I'll just tell them good job. So don't be shy about answering questions either. All right. So welcome to the class. Hopefully you enjoyed the first section of videos. Uh, and you did all your introduction and everything in the, in the uh, actual section one. And yeah, don't be a stranger.